Welcome to Steelers Cast on TimesOnline.com from Gillette Stadium. We're here after the Steelers just fell disappointingly 36 17 to the New England Patriots in the AFC Championship. Chris Mueller, Chris Bradford recapping, you know, probably uh, one of the worst losses in franchise history, at least hurtful ones. Um, you know, the Steelers come in here expecting to at least compete with the red hot New England's Patriots team, Chris. And obviously, clearly, after watching this, that wasn't the case. No, the Steelers weren't able to get anything done that they thought they were going to get done. They did not get any pressure on Tom Brady. Uh, the running game with Le'Veon Bell, which has been the key to their success during this nine game winning streak, never got off the ground because Le'Veon Bell didn't last very long with that groin injury. He was hurt on the second offensive play from scrimmage for the Steelers. Tried to come back in the second half. Uh, the second quarter for a play and realized that he was not going to be able to be the same player that he was. How much do you think that really hurt you know, the fluidity of their offense? Because uh, you know, after that, Ben Roethlisberger, they, they really couldn't do anything consistently. No, I mean, obviously, anytime you lose, the, who the Steelers consider the best all-around running back in the game, it's going to have an effect. You know, I thought D'Angelo Williams did a good job. I think the problem for the Steelers, it's been the same problem that they've always had all season, and it's that they don't have a true number two receiver. You saw that tonight with the uh, drops by uh, Sammy Coates and by Kobe Hamilton, a couple that could have gone for touchdowns. I'm not saying that's going to change the game, but I think it makes it a lot closer game if those guys make those plays, particularly early on. Yeah, they were both in the uh, first half, and now moving into our player of the game is none other than Tom Brady. Finishes with a career playoff high, 384 yards passing, and he really, you know, it was methodical. He was checking out of plays at the line of scrimmage, uh, finding a lot of receivers downfield, converting on third downs. There really wasn't a lot that Brady didn't do tonight. Uh, that's why he is the GOAT, the greatest of all time. I think you saw that tonight. You know, he was uh, was very good at pinpointing his throws as kind of the underbelly of the Steelers defense. They were playing a lot of zone. Uh, they, they never got the, the pressure on him that they were hoping to get, and it really just set up Tom Brady to have you know a pretty much a career night. Chris Hogan, someone you know, not a lot of people have heard before, the receiver for New England. He, he only caught 12 career passes at Monmouth University, where he went to school. Finishes with 180 yards, a, a franchise record for the Patriots. You know, you think the Steelers? I mean, the Steelers knew he was a deep threat, but I don't think they were really expecting this kind of performance from him. You know, uh, Hogan's a great story. I mean, the guy yeah. played against Robert Morris at Monmouth. Uh, was a lacrosse player at uh, Penn State before he became a receiver at Monmouth. Uh, the Steelers talked a little bit about him. I know Ross Cockrell and Arthur Moses, they talked a lot about his work ethic and, and about his uh, his ability, that he was kind of underrated. Uh, he's been kind of flying under the radar a little bit this season with Julian Edelman, but you saw tonight uh, the kind of big play capabilities he has, and when you, you, you part, you place him with Tom Brady, you look that much better. Well, now recapping you know, the season as the Steelers try to move on from this next year, I mean, they do have some you know, young, critical key pieces, but there's also going to be a lot of free agents the Steelers might re-sign. How do you think they might attack this offseason? Well, we heard from James Harrison after the game. He said already that he'd like to be back, so that, that's something to, to keep in mind. Obviously, it's going to be a different team. You know, a guy like Lawrence Stevens, he might be gone. Uh, they have a good core on their defense of the younger guys that uh, really stood out during this season, during the run, uh, Burns, Davis, and Hargrave. You know, there's definitely pieces there, but I think this is a missed opportunity for the Steelers. They felt like this was a team that could have gotten to the Super Bowl. Uh, the one positive thing you can take away from this, this season from the Steelers is, you know, one year they're a wild card team, one year they're division round. This year the AFC Championship, maybe next year they get to that Super Bowl again. Uh, we didn't get the things done that we wanted to get done, really, um, on offense or on defense or on special teams in a consistent enough manner for it to be competitive and close. They played the type of ball that they normally play, and we didn't play the type of ball that we normally play. And uh, in order for us to be successful, we felt like we had to play our style of ball, and it didn't get to that. Thanks to everyone for tuning in with us all season long, the Steelers cast on timesonline.com. We'll have coverage next week, kind of looking into the offseason and see what the Steelers could do moving forward into next season.